metacognition number 10 in our toolbox of cognitive tools. I think I've mentioned on previous slides that meta just means above and beyond, cognition means learning. So being above and responsible for your own learning is what metacognition means, so being responsible for your own learning. As my little graphic down here on the left hand side indicates, getting inside your own head and understanding how you learn and how you might take advantage of how you learn. So, getting inside your own head. So, learning how to learn is often assumed. And if there's one thing my cognitive toolbox is all about, it's making sure we don't assume we know how to learn. It's about helping you define how you learn, how you prefer to learn in particular ways, in particular contexts, and how you might go about putting together some tools into your cognitive toolbox that will help you in that, and in particular in electrical physics. So learning how to learn is often assumed, so let's not assume it. Next, in electrical physics, that can be a very large problem because a lot of things that we assume we know can often be misconceptions. So in electrical physics, we've got to understand that there is probably much that's assumed and often that which is assumed can be quite wrong. The first stage is to recognize that you can be responsible for your own learning. That may sound a little trite, but sometimes we've got to state the obvious. So certainly in the adult learning environment, which is where electrotechnology lives, that first stage is to recognize that you need to be responsible and can be responsible for your own learning. Next, I often hear students and teachers talk about understanding your preferred learning style. And this is being responsible for your own learning. It may be, but unfortunately there is far more to it. And this is a very shallow concept that can actually create more problems than it solves. But I'll explain that a little more deeply shortly. So I don't have time or need to bore you with adult learning theory. Um, that's for people like me who do lots and lots of study and my cognitive toolboxes or the tools within my cognitive toolbox are built on sound adult learning theory. But for now, you don't need to know the detail of what that is. So how can one be responsible for your own learning without actually knowing all about adult learning theory? So I've got three things. One, Recognize that the electrical training package is built on a constructivist world view. Now when we say constructivist, we mean building layer upon layer, taking something you already know and adding a bit more to it, and then adding a bit more to that, testing that, and then doing a bit more, so on and so forth, starting with the simplex, moving to the complex, starting with the concrete, moving to the abstract. That is a constructivist worldview. And sometimes it can be helpful, sometimes it can be unhelpful, but if you recognize that that is how our training packages are built, we can take advantage of it when it's appropriate, and we can do something else when it's not appropriate. So that is, it's built up in logical, educational, and conceptual layers. This we simply have to live and work with but it helps to know that it's sitting there in the background, whether you realize it or not. Next, if the units of learning are intentional layers, then making sure we know, understand, and make sense of each of the layers is very important because it will link into the next layer. And of course, a weak link in any chain and the chain is going to break. So we know it's constructivist, we know it's going to have layers, and we're going to need to understand 
what the layers are and how one layer links to the next and back from that link back to the previous. There are all these little connections and if we don't get the connections we end up with a weak link. Three, note that all learning takes time and effort. Try to get a grasp of how much time and effort is required. A rough guide is a nine week unit will take approximately 40 hours plus some assessment time. So allow one week for assessment, so 40 hours divided by eight, that's gonna be about five hours study per week, absolute minimum. So of that unit, you would probably do about four hours at tech and one hour at home. Yes, all units will require you to do some further study outside the formal tech learning space. So I'll say that again, take our average 40 hours for a nine week unit, divide it by eight gives you five hours of study minimum per week. And that's for Mr. and Mrs. kind of average. If you're super smart, and there's not too many R in electrotechnology, then maybe a half hour extra will be required. For some who are absolutely struggling and finding science and maths very difficult, then you may have to put an extra hour and a half, maybe even two hours in per week for each unit. That's just the reality that it all takes time and effort. So how can one be responsible for their own learning, again, without adult learning theory? So there's this thing that we call, you can see on the right hand side over here, on the logo, we have hands, head and heart. So this is a way we can divide up the learning and understand that there are certain things that we can learn hands-on. There is kind of things we can learn cognitively with our heads and there's emotional things that we can learn with our hearts. So quite often we can break our learning up into these three categories. So the fourth thing we can do is understand that there are three basic areas of learning and how to discriminate. So I call them head, heart, hand. The head area is about the content and learning in electrical theory. This is anything that predominantly uses our thinking skills. The heart part is the content area to do with what we sometimes call soft skills. In the electrical area, it's about taking care of people. And we do that through WHS, work, health and safety, and the relationships, how we work and learn together. So that, that's heart skills. And then there's the hands area. It's about the doing, showing and demonstrating a skill in real time or having one demonstrated to us in real time, then we practice it. So generally, you can break learning areas up into hands, head and heart. And depending on which category we're working in, we're going to use a different skill set for hands, a different one for head, and a different one again for heart. But first we have to understand what falls in the head, what falls in the hands, what falls in the heart, before we can start to use the skills for the particular area. Eight, now to learning styles and preferences that you may have. I've heard many students say my preferred learning style is by doing. What they mean is hands-on. So they mean, you know, working with their hands. Unfortunately, you can't use your hands to learn electrical physics because you can't see it, touch it, taste it, hear it or smell it. So using your hands is not going to help you with the theory component of electrical physics. You're going to have to understand it's a head thing and use some cognitive skills to learn it. Firstly, you need to understand that a person's learning preference will change depending on the context or situation of the learning. You will need to be in a workshop or the field to learn how to use a file. So in that context, you would use hands-on. 
to learn the theory of how a file works, which type to select for a particular task, theory or head knowledge may be better learnt in a classroom or by researching on the web at home. So you can see, you might think that uh, learning to use a file is a hands skill. Well, it actually has a hands component and a heads component. When we're learning the proper stance, the right metals to use with a particular file, that's head knowledge. You're not going to learn that by doing. So understanding how to use a file as a heads component and a hands component. So how can we take responsibility? Yes, you as an adult must be responsible for your own learning. Your teacher will help you in the learning process. That's their job. Their job actually isn't to teach you anything. Their job is to help you learn. In being responsible for your own learning gives you leverage and motivation. If you're going to be responsible for your own learning, you'll be motivated, you'll find ways to learn things. So take responsibility for time and effort that is going to be required. Quantify the time and the effort, then manage them. So find a way to measure up how many hours, how much time, how much effort, and then find a way to set aside the time and the effort to manage your learning. So manage effort by making sure you have enough sleep the day before you go to tech, for example. Manage time by using all your time at tech well. Put aside at least 15 to 20 minutes four times a week to study. Probably and preferably at the beginning of the day when your brain is at its best, not at 10 o'clock at night when your brain is probably at its worst. I also have a video on study techniques if you need help in that area. Take a little time to filter. Is the learning a head thing, a heart thing, or a hand thing? Then decide what is the best context to learn this in. Then, and only then, what's your preferred learning approach within that context? And finally, be responsible. Don't data dump. Remember, these training packages are built on a constructivist worldview. So the learning in one unit feeds into the next, feeds into the next, feeds into the next. They all link together. If you only learn just enough to pass one unit, it probably won't be enough to get you started into the next. So I hope you've enjoyed a little bit about metacognition or being responsible for your own learning. <laughs>